So if you watched my last cat video, you'll know I started doing the Q&A and it started spiraling out of control. Um, and I realized there was a lot more questions than I thought there was. So I thought I would put them all into one video and make a very, just a real good sit down talk video and chat through all of the questions you guys had. There were some brilliant questions, you know, about advice I would give, things I use um, and all of that. So. I really want to dig into this today and I just want to say thank you to everyone who asked questions. If you've got any of the questions that you want to ask me about something very specific, just leave me a message down below. This community is amazing. There are so many of you out there who have ragdolls, either from my influence or you were already getting one when you saw my videos, but I love I love this little cat community that we've got going on. It makes me so, so happy um, and yeah. You guys are my people. <laughs> anyway, let's jump in, shall we? So I'll do some quick fire questions and try and answer them very quickly. I am between the two of my beautiful boys right now. <laughs> Makes me so happy. Okay, do you brush them regularly? How often can you show us how? And I usually brush them on a night time. Um, and I brush them once, sometimes twice a day, sometimes I miss a day. No one's perfect, but the less I brush them, the more hair there is everywhere, the more chance they've got of getting fur balls. Fun fact, the only cat that has ever had fur balls is Rory, and it's because he obsessively licks one part, we call it the stripe. He constantly licks that bit when he's bathing himself, and he also really loves grooming Echo, so I try and keep on top of it mostly for Rory's health because I don't want him getting fur balls. Do you bathe them and how did they get used to it eventually? I don't bathe them, I only ever do if they've had diarrhea, for example if we're changing food or if they're ill, which has happened, both of those have happened. Um, if that happens I'll sometimes do it over the kitchen sink and just kind of try and do it in some way. They hate it. The best way I found with Echo was to put him in the bath and do it like that because then only the back of him got wet. But neither of them like getting their feet wet so it's a bit difficult but what I'll usually do is fill the sink with water and put a towel in the bottom and then just kind of use the water and yeah it's, it's a whole thing like I don't recommend washing your cats and um, they really don't like it. Someone else says how do you handle the hairs? I'm going go go cuckoo over here. Um, you just have to accept that they're part of your life now. We always say added protein which is gross to anyone who doesn't own pets but <laughs> It's just life. Those little hairs, they get everywhere. I can wipe the side, I can, you know, do everything so well and there's still a hair in the place you don't want the hair to be. But I own cats at the end of the day and that's part and parcel, you know. It's just life. I just got two ragdoll kittens and they are quite timid and hide a lot. Is there anything I can do? I would say just give them time. Don't force them to be someone they're not. They might never be that big loud cat that you want them to be but you just have to accept that they are who they are and the more confident they are in you the more they'll come out of their shell eventually. Our breeder told us to keep them in one room for the first week, how do I introduce them to the house? Everyone's different, you saw how we introduced our cats and if you didn't I'll leave a video for you guys to watch. Um, but I would just say slow and steady and don't overwhelm them all in one go. If you introduce them to a new room and they look like they're getting stressed, just go back to the start and just take it one step at a time. There is no right and no wrong way and each cat reacts differently to different circumstances. Rory and Echo are both really confident cats. Our house is mostly open plan so we didn't really have many options so we just went with it and it worked out really well for us thankfully. In the summer do you open the windows and leave the back door open? I have this this dilemma. Yes, this is a big dilemma and one I want to, oh, <laughs> one I want to resolve this year for us. We can't leave any doors or any windows open. We put the windows on latch and the door only opens if we're going in or out of it. I really want to get a um, cat proof mesh for the back door so we can let some air in this year and we're also thinking about getting, I think they're called cat, cat flats. <laughs> It's like a sticky mesh that goes over the windows for the upstairs windows to let more air to circulate but yeah because they're indoor cats and they're only supervised with me and Dom outdoors yeah unfortunately it's a, it's a bit of a lifestyle change that one it's taken us a long time to get used to. What colour do you use for them? Um, we don't use collars, we've got harnesses and like I said I'll leave them all in the description box down below for you guys. Um, someone else said, how do you keep them calm while bathing them? 
they're a law to themselves remember that they're not people they are cats and I usually find like you know if someone gets stressed you just want to give them a cuddle actually a cat just wants to go and retreat somewhere and just be a ball and that's them feeling safe and that's them feeling more safe than if you were to like cuddle them because they feel really confined in that so do what you need to do, you know, console them, tell them they're okay, um, give them treats after, that's pretty much all you can do, but let them go. <laughs> like, once it's done, let them go and be and do whatever cats do to feel safe and protected by themselves. My phone keeps going to sleep. I've got a girl cat, but I want a boy too. I've heard they spray. Have you ever experienced this? I got a few questions about this. Thankfully, we've never experienced this. We got them both neutered. Um, in fact, Rory was already neutered when we brought him home, and because of lockdown, Echo wasn't. But we had them both neutered before... I think before they were three months old, which is recommended by vets, at least here, uh, in my area, and we've never had an issue with that, so... It can be an issue uh, for some people, especially with territory. So it's like, if you've got an older cat and you bring a new cat in, sometimes they can try and dominate. We get that quite a bit with Echo, like laying on top of Rory and like biting his neck, usually when they're playing, um, but we've not actually had any like walls over territory, thankfully. But that is something that can happen. Um, I know it happened with my family cats before, you know, it's just a way of them saying, this is my zone, stay out. <laughs> Do the cats react if you leave the house for a few hours and do they get along? We recently set up a camera to see what would happen when we did. Um, I know that uh, Rory has quite bad separa separation anxiety when we go out of the house. You can hear him from the bottom of the garden. He settles down usually within five or ten minutes. And when we set up the camera, exactly the same, you know, he meowed at the door a few times um, and then he just went upstairs and they went to sleep. So I'm not too worried about them. And they spend about 90% of their time upstairs asleep on the bed or under the bed when we're out and they're just happy with that and they come plodding down the stairs happy when we're back home again. How do you prevent them from scratching your furniture? We just have cat scratching posts on all levels of the floor in multiple places. We have one in the kitchen, which is random, I know, but it's just life. We've got one in the living room. And then we've got two, I think, upstairs. So, oh, we have three, actually. We've got a mat, which is really, really good. So they can claw at it, um, you know, on the floor rather than clawing the carpet, which is so, so good. The only problem I ever get is if Rory's attention-seeking on a night, he will scratch the rug here. And it's usually because he's trying to play with something that's gone under the sofa. <laughs> so they're the biggest problems we have with them scratching. And if that happens, you just distract them, you know, play with a different toy. Um, yeah, just try and divert their attention to something else. Does their hair shed everywhere? Yeah, it gets where water doesn't. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's everywhere, you know. We say when people come to our house, just don't wear black. And I get quite a lot of messages sometimes saying like, oh, um, how do you never have cat hair? Your house looks so clean. I wear a lot of light clothes. It's my preference and all my furniture is really light, as you can see, but it's there. The hair is there. I hoover this rug every single day and every single day the drum is full. It's just life. Um, are you planning on adding more cats to the family? Maybe one day. As it stands, this house is not big enough. And to be honest, we're just content. They're both happy. I wouldn't want to change that. I really would like a Maine Coon in the future or maybe another ragdoll. We'll see. But one day, never say never. But right now, we're very happy with our little fam. <laughs> Do you still feed the cats raw? Did you notice much of a difference once you changed? I can't get them to eat it. I have an entire freezer drawer full of raw food, which is annoying because we've only got three drawers in the freezer, so I just can't get them to eat it. They've completely gone off it, and I'm living in hope that one day they'll go back onto it, but for now, they're just not interested, and that's just life, you know? If someone wanted to feed me a meal every day that I hated, I wouldn't be very happy, so I just try and put myself in their shoes. The change I noticed is their poo smells more now than it did before on a raw diet, you know, the smell goes completely. It is a really healthy diet for them um, and I wish that they would still eat it, but hey, that's life. When is Rory's birthday? Do you know, I can't remember off the top of my head. For some reason, I want to say the 25th of March, but if you follow me and them on Instagram, then you'll know when it is, but it is this month, so crazy it's gone so so fast i can't believe how fast that time's gone do they want to go outside often would you let them go out into the garden on their own um 
I think when they're bored they usually want to go out. Rory begs every single morning to go out so I usually let him out in the morning. Echo would go out all day every day if he could, bless him. <laughs> but I don't let them go out by themselves so I go out with them mostly because they're a danger to themselves as you saw with Rory and the wasps um, and just making sure they're protected and safe and yeah happy as well so we go out they have a good time they come in when they're ready and that's just kind of our little routine we've got going one thing I found is cats love routines so if you can kind of stick to a routine as much as you can they know what to expect and there's no like anxiety or anything coming up for them you know this is our routine we've had a crazy morning and now it's the afternoon and they'll sleep through until like five or six o'clock how much do they weigh do you know I don't know the answer to this but I will find out maybe later on we can weigh them and find out do they ever get grumpy with each other <laughs> yes <laughs> Some days they love each other so much, other days they want nothing to do with each other. You know, some days they won't even lay this close to each other and other days they're like on top of each other. It's just like people, you know, I feel like you can wake up on the wrong side of the bed, um, they can annoy each other and sometimes they just want to play but on the whole they get on really really well and I'm really grateful for that. Would you consider a catio for the boys in the future? Not in this house, it's not the right house, it's not the right design for a catio. Our door is on the side and we have um, a alleyway or whatever you would call it down the side of the house with a gate. I have racked my brain trying to make it work but it just won't work and to be honest we can't afford it so as it stands we're just going to keep going with the whole lead situation. We would have the garden cat proofed, we looked into it, so expensive and as I said this isn't our forever home, we're hoping to move in a few years so there's not very much point investing very much money into trying to cat proof the garden when to be honest we're all happy with the setup we've got going on outside, it gives us all the freedom we need um, and they are safe at the end of the day. But if you can afford a catio and you can justify it, you know, with the shape of your house and the way your garden flows, absolutely I say go for it because it means you don't have to be worried about them and they've kind of got their own autonomy as well and they get to get the fresh air. Do they ever have little <laughs> do they ever have little accidents outside their litter tray? Poop talk here, so if you're a bit squeamish, skip along. Um the only one who ever has an issue is Echo. <laughs> He gets what we call Klingons and he always has a poo in the litter tray, he's a good boy but when he comes out there's always one and it always drops right in front of the litter tray and I'm always like why? Like why? And he gets so stressed trying to bury it you know with the floor which obviously does nothing so I'm just always conscious. They tend to go at exactly the same time like usually one after each other or at the same time they're such weirdos so I know when it's happening and I'm always there I basically they have a poo and I scoop it straight up and it's out because as I said the house is open plan I don't want the house smelling so I kind of stay on top of the cats uh, litter trays in that way. How do you discipline and stop bad behaviour? Uh, we have a seven month old ragdoll and we are struggling well if you find out then let me know because <laughs> yeah trouble number one over there i usually just say no really firmly the the naughtiest behavior we've got going on right now is when Rory wants attention or wants something very particular because he's a very particular cat he will nibble um, my toes on my ankles and he tends to do it when i'm in bed as well and it's not a vicious bite it's just like a and he'll, he'll keep his teeth on it like like this and just like do this and he's not clamped down and he's never like broken the skin or anything but it hurts like his teeth are sharp so I'm trying to stop that behavior at the minute I just say no firmly on point and he doesn't like that and he's got used to no so that's kind of working for us Echo used to be really really naughty when he was a kitten biting ankles and like he used to run and like launch at me with that and he used to eat the plant as well I just used to gently blow in his face and that stopped him dead straight but Rory is very very strong world and that does nothing it's just like yeah and, and he like comes at me worse so <laughs> it's funny like disciplining two cats that are completely different but just do what you can I think positive info uh, positive reinforcement works so much better than negative so maybe just divert their attention if they are wanting attention give them the attention they need and just try and figure out what they want which is like a Rubik's Cube I know but <laughs> I just got a ragdoll kitty if she's super hyperactive is this normal yes <laughs> kittens are so crazy and even echo now like he's over a year old and he still has his mad moments 
some kittens are worse than others in terms of like being really crazy and hyperactive, you know, jumping around and climbing up furniture and climbing up walls. It's just behavior. And in, if you reinforce the right behavior, you know, it will slowly change with time. But accepting that they're a kitten, they're absolutely full of energy and they need your attention is just something you have to do and play with them as much as you possibly can um, feed them after and then hopefully they'll pass out and that'll be you set for an hour or two. But it does calm down, you know, Echo slowed down so, so much recently and that's been really nice, you know. We get the entire afternoon to ourselves now without them like constantly on our tail, whereas at the beginning of the day it's a completely different story. Are Rory and Echo actually related? No, nope, not at all. They're from completely different ble ble bleeders? breeders. I can leave information for the breeders we used um, maybe down below or if you really want to know you can message me just because I don't want them to be inundated by people messaging who aren't really that serious but I love both breeders. I think they did a really good job with both cats and I definitely recommend both of them, but no, they're not related. I had wanted to get um, a kitten from the same breeder as Echo, but it just all, fate did its thing and it just worked out this way. But they act like brothers, like they're so happy. I think it's because we got them quite close in age. So Echo was nine months when we brought Rory home. Um, and Echo was really needing that extra stimulation and extra attention, so I think it was like the perfect time. Would you ever consider breeding ragdolls? No, I really wouldn't. Um, I have nothing against breeding ragdolls, but I think if you're gonna do it, you need to do it properly. Both my boys are neutered, and I signed a contract when I bought them saying I wouldn't be breeding from them. They're not breed standard, and it's something that, when you're in the whole world of like pedigree pets and you know all of that, you start to understand why and why things are a certain way um, and I, I believe in the system that they've got going on. Um, personally it's such a big job, like it's, <laughs> it's a lot. I can't imagine weaning like six kittens off um, milk onto food and the craziness that must come with that, you know, in terms of like diarrhea <laughs> and having all the injections. It's a full-time job and it's not a job I would want, but I, yeah, I'm grateful to the people who do do it and they absolutely love the work they do. Um, but it is, it's a, it's a mammoth job, that one. <laughs> um, and also then you've got to deal with mating calls and that is a thing in itself. Um, you know, if you've got a, a female cat and even ma male cats when they're not uh, neutered they spray and they're like territorial and they're more aggressive and I, I yeah it would be a lot <laughs> um I'm thinking of getting a ragdoll oh that's the same question so just asking again if they spray so no they don't but just because my boys don't doesn't mean that any other cat doesn't you know I am only speaking from the experience that I've had with my two boys I said this was going to be quick and concise and it's 18 minutes long so sorry about that <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I hope that that helped any of you who needed to hear the, you know, words of reassurance and the advice that I just gave as well, but they're the best things I ever did. I absolutely love them both to pieces. Um, they make my life so much more special and I wouldn't be without them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you got some value from it. If you've got any other questions you'd love me to answer about the cats or anything in particular, just leave me a message down below. I'm more than happy to answer them. If you wanna see any videos from my crazy boys, I will leave a playlist down below. I've got plenty on this channel, you know, from bringing them home up to now. Um, I love documenting their lives and just being able to look back and I know that you guys do too as well, so. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for supporting me and for loving on my boys as much as you all do. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a really wonderful rest of your day and I'll speak to you all again in my next video. Bye.